Hi, I'm Rodney Bowers. I'm here with Boulart Bread, and we're here at the Seattle Show 2013. And what we're doing is demoing bread. We're going to make a, uh, a burger, but we're going to do it a little bit different. We're going to do it on a, uh, it's called the Big Burger, the Big Sandwich Burger. And we're going to use our six inch ciabatta, cut it in half. And the key to victory, two things when you're making a burger, good meat and good bread. So we have both. We have 100% uh, grass fed beef, well seasoned, good sea salt. Indoor shows, we bring our own griddles. A tiny little bit of butter, just kissed with butter. Oh, a little, just a schmidgen. We're gonna put this in the same time as our meat. It's gonna steam up to bread perfection. I'm a classic person when it comes to burgers. So the beautiful thing about this bread is it's gotta be soft, because when you bite into a burger, the bread, the bun, it has to have the perfect amount of give so that when you eat through it, you eat through the meat, it's the perfect bite. And when you steam this bread, especially this ciabatta, it's gonna give it the perfect bite, right? So it's important to take your time, do it a little bit slow and low, and everything comes out exactly the way you want it. So when we're halfway about cooking our meat, we're gonna add a little bit of onion because I like that savory sweetness of the onion to start to cook down and flavor the beef. So, just like grandma used to make, I like to do one little no-look olive oil. Other key feature to a great burger, we got soft bun, we got great beautifully cooked meat, well seasoned, and you need crisp lettuce. Because we're gonna find a firm tomato goes a long way. I also recommend that if you're not in tomato season, I call it tomato because it's my accent, we make a little bit of tomato jam. So depending on where you are or when you are, you are either getting great, very firm, fleshy, tasty, sweet tomatoes. There's no point in buying tomatoes off season. So you alt for a sun-dried tomato jam which is what we do at the restaurant in the winter. There's a lot of problems sometimes with cooking meat, medium or medium rare. And uh, a lot of that stems from, I mean, we ground this this morning, right? So if you're, you're taking fresh chuck, or which is what we're using here, you can eat that steak medium rare or rare. Or, I mean, if you know where it's coming from, it's a good supplier. Like I said, we're using grass-fed beef. Um, and it's not a very fatty meat, so we actually took different parts of fat trim, which we asked the butcher for, and grind that into the chuck because there's not enough fat in there. Who likes cheese on their burger hands? Cheese? Everybody, everybody like it a cheese. We're using an aged Canadian cheddar. I like to use white, but come on. Sticking with the classic. Oh, look at that. That's when the magic's starting to happen. The key with food is to let it cook. A lot of young cooks just, they mess around too much with the food. You gotta just, you gotta leave it alone, you know? You gotta let it happen. So a lot of people say only flip meat once. I like to flip it as much as it has to be. And you wanna get all that meat, all that beef, nice and caramelized because that's where all your flavor is going to come from. So all this bread, when, when we distribute it into the food service industry, it comes 100% baked and then frozen. So when we're using it in a restaurant environment, all you have to do is take it out of the box, thaw it, and serve it, right? And then when you're using it in different food service practices, reheat it, warm it up to however you're going to serve it, whether it's in a burger or if it's in a panini. It's beautiful. We use this bread at the restaurant for a meatball sandwich, and it's absolutely ideal because we never run out of bread and we never throw any out. So from a, you know, a standpoint of not only cost, but, you know, just overall saving on food waste, it's very economical and it's very earth friendly, right? You just pull what you need and the bread's ready for five minutes right from the freezer. 
So I'm going to start to get the base ready. We got a little bit of special, special, we call this the hot rod sauce. Very thin. So I think the perfect burger, you need to have the perfect balance of sweet and savory and crispy and crunchy. I'm gonna put this right on my meat. So it melts. See how you can hear that? How crispy is that lettuce? It's very, very important. I'm gonna do two bits of tomato, a little bit on the bottom. And that's it, we're gonna stop right there. Oh! Huh, did I form a perfect patty? Or perfect, isn't that right? All those delicious onions we grilled up. Oh my God, come on. We gotta think outside the box when we think about burgers, right? This puts the Whopper to shame. Come on. The perfect burger. People can check me out at rodneybowers.com, heymeatball.com, or check out the bread at www.boulart.com, and it's in your local grocery markets everywhere.